Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video I'd like to talk about the image cropper, the power behind it and what we can do with it. So right here I have this document type called home. The only thing it has is a title text string and the image uh, media picker. So the image media picker is a default data type that comes with uh, a clean and Braco install. Then we have the image media picker. So this media picker only allows us to pick images and right now it's only one. But right above it we have the image cropper which is mainly what this video is about. So when uploading media, the content editor can see the image. So what I've done right now is we have this image and we're showing it on this, this page. But like you can see, this image is pretty big. I can scroll all the way through it and I do have a pretty big screen, but there is a little boat. So what I want to do is uh, I want to crop and resize it so it fits our screen. So the code we're using right now is um, we are in a razor view, which is this home.cshtml. And we are inheriting the Umbraco view page with the models builder class home. Then we're uh, parsing the image into a separate variable and I'm making sure it's not notable because I did make it required. But for some reason it doesn't like that. So what we can do now is now we have an image which is of type media with crops. Then we can call the get crop URL method. And when we don't parse any parameters in we get the whole image like you just saw a second ago. But we can also start typing. So let's say we want an image uh, with 100 by 100 pixels. When we look at the result now, you can see we have our image on the top left. It's very tiny. So let's increase that value a bit. Let's make it 1000 by 1000 pixels. If you now go to the page and refresh it, we see it's a bit bigger. The get crop URL allows us to parse in many parameters. So we can define the width, the height, but we can also parse in a crop alias, which you can see right there. The crop alias is what is shown in the back office right here. On the right side we have these little thumbnails with a text beside it. It says small, banner and large. When going to the media cropper we can see the same uh, words, small, banner and large, with a set of pixels by it. So let's consume these defined crops. If we now look at our code, I have defined two variables. One is called small crop URL and one is called large crop URL. And by parsing in the alias as a string to the get crop URL uh, extension method, we can now render two images, one with the small crop and one with the large crop. Let's see the result. So on the bottom left, we can see a little tiny image, which is uh, the small crop URL. And on the right side, we see the large one. By using aliases, instead of uh, manually typing in uh, width and height, we can allow the content editor to edit the image as they like. If we go back to Umbraco, and we open this image, we can see that we can edit um, the field of view. So for example, I can even zoom in the image a bit more. I click done and I save the image. When we now refresh the page, you can see the focus has changed. Let's also do that for the large one. So we can move it, we can zoom. Let's really get that boat in there. I want the sun on it as well. Done and save. Now re refresh the page. And the image is just as large in pixels, but now the focus has changed. This is called a user-defined crop. What we can also do is change the focal point for automatically generated crops. So when we look at the code now, we're getting the banner crop URL. We're only rendering the banner one, but now we can play around with the focal point. So because this is not a user-defined crop and is still being generated, we can change the focal point. So let's put it on the top bottom left. You can always see the thumbnail changing here. If I save it now, you can see that the image also changed here. So I'd like to dive a bit deeper into the media picker itself. So we just discussed the image cropper, which is also a part of the media picker. This one will accept an Im image, uh, has zero or one items, and that's it, everything is left empty. So I created my own. It's called Profile Picture Media Picker. It's the whole name. What it does, it only allows images from the Profile Pictures folder. Also only images, zero or one. And then another thing I added was um, I added local crops. And local crops are just like th the crops, but these are stored on the document. So they are not a part of the media, they are a part of the document. And what does that mean? Well, we have the profile picture crop right here, it's 500 by 500. If I now go to the item from the media tab, it's not on the right side, only the small banner and large. These three crops are only a part of the media item itself. If I now go to the home page and my, I look at the picture, on the right side we see the media, media item itself and then there is an extra one called profile picture. This is the one that we us uh, usually defined. If we look at this from code, we can see that we can do the exact same thing. So from code we just call the profile picture 
uh, crop URL and this will render out the profile picture. This will render out the picture uh, as defined on the local crop. Probably the best thing about this is that we can both use the local crops and the media defined crops. So right now we have the profile picture and we're getting the banner which is defined on the media item but we're also getting the local crop called profile picture and we can both render these. So left side is the banner, right side is the profile picture. And this local crop is only available in the profile picture media picker. So if we try to get the local crop called profile picture through the image media picker, which is the default one, so let's change it, let's change both of them to image, we can see that only the banner is rendering because the other one doesn't exist. It does not throw an exception, which is nice. It's probably returning an empty string. So how does this actually work? Just above each variable, I've added the output. So grad crop URL returns a string because this is of time string. And what it does, it, 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 it gets the media item and then it will add some uh, query parameters like width, height. And like we know on the banner one, we set width and height to 800 and 200, just like it outputted here. On the profile picture, we also set a focus point, manually adding it. And it, it's adding that to this um, URL as well. On the water, this will be converted by, the, by image sharp and image sharp will t uh, output the profile picture like we've just seen. Because the output of getCropURL uses query parameters to talk to image sharp, we can also manually uh, do stuff. So for example, we have the local crop URL and I could add the format to it. So I could say, well, output this image as WebP, which is a new web st uh, standard, which is a lot more efficient than uh, JPEG or PNG. And what, what we can see now, if I now go to the browser, you'll see that uh, this image while it's still a JPEG, will actually be a WebP file. We can validate this by looking at the content type, which is called is image-webp. That was it on this video about I the image picker and the image cropper. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Thanks for watching and bye.